Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Um, today, we're going to talk about WordPress and how you can use that for your business or for your online store. Just to introduce myself, Ricky is my name. I work for Business Station. I'm a digital business advisor. Um, and you're welcome to contact me. I'll provide my contact details at the end of this. But what are we going to talk about today? Well, I'll just bring the agenda up. So what we'll be talking about today is basically we've only got an hour, so there's a fair bit to get through. But basically, I'll run through what WordPress is because there are two different uh, versions of WordPress, if you like, or even more than two versions. So we can talk about that, what you could use it for, the ideal sort of business that it's sort of targeted at, uh, you know, what you need to build a successful WordPress website. I'll then go into some of the components, such as the themes and the plugins. We'll talk about e-commerce briefly, uh, what you can do to promote your site, and also what you can do to improve the search engine rankings or SEO on your site. So with that in mind, let's kick on. If you have any questions, by the way, please feel free just to throw your question in the chat box there and uh, we'll get onto those. Anything specific that you might want to know, any question that you have about your particular installation of WordPress, for example. Okay, so what is WordPress? Well, WordPress is a, uh, an organization that's owned by a company called Automatic. So a little bit like how Meta owned Facebook or Alphabet owned Google. In this case, WordPress is owned by Automatic. And there are two parts to the company. One is WordPress.com, which is a hosted, mostly blogging platform. It's free with ads, or you can pay for a premium version. It's fairly limited functionality. It's really more for the hobby sort of uh, blogger. There's then WordPress.org, and that's this is what we're going to focus on today. And basically, WordPress.org is a not-for-profit foundation. And within that not-for-profit foundation, they develop the WordPress open source WordPress platform. So the, the fact that it's open source is one of its most powerful features, and we'll talk about that. It's free to use, but not necessarily free, because you still need to host it somewhere uh, on a website or on a website hosting platform. So a web hosting organization needs to host that for you, unlike, say, Wix or Shopify, where it's built into the, the platform. Uh, one of the huge benefits of WordPress is that it's totally flexible. You can do anything you want with a WordPress website. And like I've said twice there, it's free to use. So like I said, that's what we're going to talk about. But I'm just going to show you briefly the two different websites. If you ever want to go there and check out the two different platforms and the differences between them. So WordPress.com, I guess, is more along the lines of those other platforms I was talking about. So Wix or Shopify, they host it for you. And uh, you just go ahead and build your site and they do a lot of the underlying work for you in terms of pro providing security and a range of other things. And they provide templates but it's quite restrictive, like I said. It's not something you would probably build an e-commerce store on or, or anything like that. This is wordpress.org. And I would recommend if you are a WordPress user to at least visit this site. You don't really need to go here other than to see what's available because most of the features of like the plugins and themes, you can, you can actually download them and install them from your WordPress dashboard. So you don't really need to go here. But it's worthwhile visiting if you ever get the chance. Um, just talks a little bit about WordPress itself and you know why it's a great tool to use. It's my platform of choice. If I design a website normally, unless there's certain uh, you know other requirements the customer might have, uh, you know WordPress will normally fit the bill for most people. So just bear with me while I'll just show you this. This is a recorded screen shot. The other thing about WordPress is it's because it's open source, there's someone in every town, in every part of the world that can at least do something on a WordPress site in, in, in terms of having some sort of expertise. And that's not necessarily the case for uh, many of the other platforms. So yeah, if you want to install WordPress, you can download it directly from this site here. 
but most website hosting platforms will have a one-click type installation for you. You can also see what themes and plugins are available here. So everything on the wordpress.org website would be a free plugin or a free theme. Um, they would maybe have free, you know, premium options available, but they're all free to use if they're on that platform. So what would you use WordPress for? What's it sort of best suited to? Well, it's suited to business websites, uh, really. Uh, so that can be fairly broad, but any sort of business website or e-commerce website, blogs, it's ideally suited to. WordPress is the king of blogging platforms, um, but it's ideally suited to you know any sort of educational website, event website, for example, any tourism or hospitality website, any website where you're listing things like real estate listings or uh, car listings, for example, directories, marketplaces, membership sites, industrial websites. These are nearly always going to be based on either, you know, a custom HTML platform and or, uh, or, or a WordPress.org platform. But not necessarily just limited to that and not to say that you can't use another platform on one of those types of sites. Now, WordPress itself, the .org or the open source version powers nearly a half of the top 1 million websites. So, you know, it's the most used website platform out there. Powers nearly 30% of the top 1 million e-commerce websites. Now, if you take into account all the different e-commerce platforms out there, you know, that puts it in the number one position. And, you know, every day there's WordPress websites being developed around the world. So the estimate is something in the order of 500 WordPress websites being developed every single day versus a lot lower if, if you're looking at some of the other platforms. And some of the world's biggest websites are based on WordPress. So BBC, Spotify, Disney, uh, New York Times, etc. And the thing about WordPress is it's a content management system. So it can manage all different types of content, not just physical products, if you like, but it can, event, it can manage your events, it can manage your menus, it can manage your images, your videos, any sort of type of content that you might have, including uh, products or blog posts. So a range of different types of content that it's designed to manage. Okay, so that's what WordPress is. That's what we're going to talk about. So what do you need to get WordPress off the ground? Well, the first thing is not necessarily, but in my opinion, you should have a domain name. You can build a website, a WordPress website using the, the hosting dom domains, the hosting company's temporary domain. But at the end of the day, you want to obviously run that under your own custom domain. So you need that. And, uh, you know, you can go to any number of places. I always recommend keeping your domain registrar separate to your hosting. And that way you can move your hosting provider or you could change platforms. You could decide I'm going to move to Shopify or Wix or just change hosting providers. It makes it very easy to do that. It's a little bit like your, you know, your phone number on your mobile phone. If you decide to change from Telstra or Optus, you can take that with you. And, and so that's why it's important to do that. If you don't and you, uh, if it's sort of, registrar is the same as the hosting company, it can be quite difficult because they'll often require you to be there for a certain period, etc. So yeah, GoDaddy, for example, if you were to register a domain there, depending on what you're after, .com or .com.au, for example, it shouldn't cost you any more than say $20 uh, for the first year. So that's your domain. You need a domain name, that's your brand at the end of the day. Then you need web hosting. So there's a lot of different web hosting platforms out there that offer WordPress as a built-in preset up option or one where you can set it up yourself just by clicking on the WordPress installation button. But there's lots of options out there, but ideally what you wanna do is try and find one that's, uh, sorry, I'll, I'll go into web hosting in a bit, bit more detail in a second, but try and find one that's gonna provide some things for you, such as security and performance, and maybe do some things that you wouldn't, uh, that you might otherwise have to do, such as backups and some security things. So we'll talk about that. Touching on security, as I just did, that's another thing you need to really take into account if you have a WordPress website. So unlike the other platforms, because you're self-hosting, because it's open source and a range of other things, um, it's really imperative that you uh, 
take security uh, very seriously. So that includes enforcing strong passwords, uh, two-factor authentication, SSL certificate as demonstrated there in that slide. And a good hosting provider will also, also provide an SSL certificate for you. You need to do backups and updates. They're two different things. So backing up your website in case there's a problem with your website so you can restore it. Updates are to ensure you've got the latest plugins or the latest version of WordPress or the latest theme uh, version, for example, because that's a potential security risk for you. And could also cause conflicts which can break your site. Uh, then you need, it's a template-based system WordPress, so you need a theme or a template, they're called themes in, in the WordPress world, and some themes come with page builders, so you don't need to necessarily have any coding experience, you can just drag and drop uh, your bits and pieces as you want, your layout as, as you feel appropriate. And I'll talk about some of those page builders uh, shortly, which ones you might want to consider. and then. One of the most powerful features of WordPress are the plugins. So, you know, you've heard of the expression, there's an app for that, you know, there's an app for virtually anything. Well, the, people used to say that about plugins before apps existed. So there's a plugin, WordPress plugin for virtually anything you could think of. Um, so very, very flexible and they just provide extra functionality. So if you want to sell products online, you need a, an, an e-commerce plugin. If you want to do your SEO, you don't necessarily need one but you can use an SEO plugin to help you with that performance, security, et cetera. So there's a lot of ways plugins really help. And you can upload those directly from the dashboard. So you just go to the plugins dashboard and you have a look there and we'll talk about some of those shortly. So let's talk about some of the hosting uh, options available to you. There's a huge array of WordPress hosting options. The most important thing you need to think about is not the least cost, but I guess, uh, you know, you need to consider performance. If it's going to be $5 a month or something like that, they're obviously, you know, using shared hosting and putting as many customers on there as possible. So you don't always get what you pay for, or you do get what you pay for, I guess. But uh, you need to think about performance and what your hosting providers talk about in terms of what they can offer but you'll often see that many of them will talk about some of the other things they do. So, you know, performance, uh, security, you know, updates and maintenance. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about of a hosting provider, because these are things you would have to be doing anyway. So uh, there's a lot of different ones. This is WP Alpha. I just found them recently, actually. They're an Australian organization. I, I don't have any experience firsthand with them, but they are a local Australian WordPress hosting organization. Um, the other thing you need to think, keep, keep in mind when you're, talk, when you're thinking about hosting uh, is the type of server that they're offering you. Is it a shared server, like I said before, or a virtual private server, or maybe cloud-based or a dedicated server? That depends on your level of expertise, I guess, and your budget and size of your organization. In most cases, most people will start with shared but I find cloud hosting is a good option for you. This one in particular here I'm showing you is Cloudways. They offer you cloud, uh, cloud hosting have the ability to offer you, uh, you know, to very easily locate your server wherever you want it. So it could be in Sydney, for example, or it might be in Singapore or Los Angeles, depending on where your audience, the majority of your audience is. It also provides you, you know, quite powerful features. Um, at a fairly cost-effective price. So I'll just show you this. So um, Cloudways are considered one of the top cloud hosting organizations. You can choose whether you want it on Google Cloud or Amazon Web Services, but there you get an idea, $12 a month, that's US dollars um, for your site, uh, depending on the server. So a little bit more for a vulture, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, Cloudways, there's also probably the most common platform that you'll often hear people talking about is SiteGround. Uh, you know, I think they're sort of average, if you like, middle of the road. Um, they do different types of hosting and I'll just show you their plans in a second because it can be a little bit misleading when you see some of their pricing. 
or anybody's pricing. So just make sure you fully understand. And also it's just telling you what they do there. So they do migrations, updates, advanced caching for performance, security plugins, etc. So these are the sort of things you want to think about. Located in Australia in Sydney and just looking at the pricing here. In a second, sorry, a little bit slow. There you can see. So, so let's say you go for the startup plan, it's $5.99 a month, that's Australian dollars. But it's a bit misleading because the second month is actually 20, it's 19.99 a month. So it's just a one month discount. But still it's $20 a month to run your business online, uh, you know, with a reputable business, uh, you know, and all the features you might want to consider. So that's SiteGround. The Rolls Royce of sort of web hosting, WordPress hosting is WP Engine. And uh, there's, I'm not sure where their servers are located, somewhere in the US, might be in, uh, in Georgia, I'm not sure, somewhere in the US. Anyway, just to give you an idea there, so these are the Rolls Royce. And I just want to show you some pricing here, if I can get to that in a second. But you'll find pretty much similar, similar sort of pricing levels. taking a little bit long to get to that pricing. So I'm just gonna skip on, but it's about $20, 24, I think it's about $25 a month. And there is also GoDaddy as well, which do provide hosting, even though I said, try and keep your registrar separate from your hosting. It's still a, an option for you. You can still move your hosting. Um, from memory, they're about $20 a month as well. So there you can see, so it's, sorry. It's $10 a month, it's $15 a month in the second year. So that's if you do it yearly uh, and for the larger package, $11.95 a month, moving to $20 a month. So pretty much uh, one thing to keep in mind, I'll just make you aware of this. I'm just gonna pause here. They do provide uh, SSL domain, which you may or may not have already, but they also, uh, provide a business email. So it is something to keep in mind. If you need email, are you gonna get it as part of your hosting or your domain? Uh, just something to think about because it can be something that people overlook, and don't consider until afterwards. Okay, so that's the hosting, different hosting options available to you. And then now I'm gonna just talk about some of the plugins available and what sort of functionality they, they add to your, uh, to your website. And this really is the most powerful feature of WordPress. And that's because it's open source. So there's lots of people out there in the world that are creating plugins, plugins and uh, you can then include these on your particular website. So, you know, a plugin could be security or e-commerce or SEO, social media. I'll just show you some of these. So you can go and see what's available either through the WordPress website or actually from your own um, website just through the plugins feature there, uh, dashboard menu. I'm just gonna go down to popular ones just to show you some of the more popular ones. So Yoast, for example, SEO is the most popular SEO plugin for WordPress. I'll show you that shortly. Uh, Elementor is the most popular website page builder. So I, I talked about that. So the rule of thumb here is really, if you're gonna install a plugin, look at the number of five stars they have in that case, 27,000 five stars. How many installations do they have? In this case, 5 million plus. You know you're gonna be in a safe place. But if they've got you know less than 100 installations, maybe one five star, then I would avoid it. Um, WooCommerce is the number one e-commerce e sort of shopping cart platform. There's security plugins like WordFence and WP Forms for forms. So it's, Really, really uh, fantastic how you can get these for free, 
without adding any additional cost. Now, in in another on another platform, say Shopify, you might have to pay a monthly fee for some some or all of these plugins. So that's where the cost differential does start to add up. Okay, so as you can see, plenty of plugins there. All of the ones that you'll see here on the WordPress site are free. Most of the WordPress plugins will have a free option with a freemium premium option as well if you need those premium features. So I'll just show you how you do this from your dashboard in case you're not aware. So uh, you just go to the plugins menu, which can sometimes be a little bit difficult to find further down. And you can either look at the installed plugins you have or add a new plugin. And then choose, look for the one that you want to install. Click install and it just does everything for you. If you go to the popular tab there, you can see it probably are the, the better ones to look at because as the name implies, they are the ones that are most often used. So relatively easy to install just from here. Okay, so they're the plugins. Okay, now I'm just gonna to touch on WordPress security because it is super important. I'll just explain why it's super important by showing you some statistics. Now I don't wanna share, scare you with these statistics because a lot of them do apply to other platforms, but uh, WordPress does, does stand out uh, because of a number of different reasons. So uh, there's 90,000 attacks per minute on WordPress websites around the world. But remember how many there are in the world there. You know, like I said, half of the top 1 million websites and a lot more of the bottom million websites. So there's a lot of WordPress websites out there. 52% of the all vulnerabilities where people are trying to hack are from plugins. So if you look at all the way WordPress websites are hacked or compromised, it will be sometimes or mostly 52 more 55% would be through plugins. And that's why it's important to keep them updated. The second one on the list there is brute force. So this is where they're trying to guess. See WordPress as default comes with an admin user as the main user uh, and you set the password. So if you don't change that username from admin, then all they, these guys are doing is they're looking for websites that are WordPress, have the username admin, and then they just need to guess the password. And eventually they'll probably do that. So if you can fix those two issues, then you know it really secures your website. But it's a little bit more than that. You also need to do a few other things. So we'll just talk about that. And I mentioned it briefly. You need to focus on, you know, a credible, secure, secure web hosting organization, uh, not just the cheapest that you can come across. You need to enforce strong passwords, particularly admi admin users, because they have the most power, if you like, to do things on your website. You need to secure your login so you can have two-factor authentication, for example, and enforce uh strong passwords so two-factor authentication is particularly recommended for administrators because of those reasons you also need to do updates regularly so you can do automatic updates or you can just uh, decide that every monday or whatever it's my time to do my wordpress updates it's often easier just to do it automatically you need to do backups and same thing you can schedule backups automatically you just use a plugin to do that for you you need to make sure you have an SSL certificate, of course, the HTTPS part of your website, because even if you don't, if you don't do that, it's not just going to affect your security, but it will affect your rankings because Google will, uh, uh, negative, your rankings will be negatively, or Google will in, uh, penalize you for not having an SSL in place. And you need to, if possible, use capture on forms to minimize more things like, you know, just junk, junk forms, spam forms. Um, and then of course, on top of all of this, try and use 
a security plugin. So there are lots of security plugins available and, um, you know, Word, WordFence is one of those, for example, that's very popular. We'll talk about that in a minute. So, so Word, uh, WordPress security is important, but also performance is important as well. Uh, they're both important because Google take them into account when ranking your website. So if you're equal with another website in every other way, but you aren't either secure, you don't have an SSL or some other factor, or you're very slow, poor performance, then you're gonna be negatively impacted by that. So a couple of things you need to do is make sure that when you choose your hosting provider that an SSL provide, uh, certificate is provided as part of that. Often case it's free now, there's uh, uh, you know various groups now that are providing free SSL certificates or hosting providers will just uh, provide that as part of the package. Um, you can also, many people will show trust seals such as these, for example, uh, just things to show, you know, what you've done to secure your site, what sort of payment options you might have available. And once again, just the updates on the hosting. Performance, um, a couple of things there. With WordPress, it's couple, it can be about your images just being too large. So you need to make sure that you reduce the number of images but it's also useful to try and use um, some sort of caching plugin, for example, like WP Rocket or um, Fastest, WP Fastest Cache, for example. There's a couple of them out there that do quite a good job. In terms of optimizing your images, there's online, if you, if you don't use Photoshop, for example, you can use online tools like TinyJPEG where you can drag images onto there and they'll compress them for you. You need to replace the ones that you have if they're too big, for example. And if you're wondering if your site's fast or slow, it's best to get a tool like GT Metrics, sign up for an account and test your website. Because you, if you sign up for an account, you can choose where the user is, where you're testing from. And uh, if you don't have an account, the default user is in Canada. And if you have an account, you can sign up and choose say Sydney as a default location. It doesn't work if you test it in your own browser because it's cached in your browser and therefore you're gonna think that it's pretty fast. So let's just quickly talk about some of the security plugins. So this is just on the WordPress website, just looking for search for security plugins. WordFence is very popular. Uh, it's almost like plug and play and it will do most of the basic security for you. And there's a few different ones. I used to prefer iTheme security, uh, better WP security. It's a little bit more technical and requires a bit more skill if you like, but really hardens your website, makes it very difficult to hack. There's also security, there's a server security down below there. So there's lots of different ones. You might just wanna try one and install it. So this one, when you install it, it it's pretty easy to follow along and uh, really does harden your website, makes it almost impossible to hack, not impossible, but much more difficult. Okay, so I would recommend making sure that you have a, Word, a WordPress security plugin installed. Now, I'm just gonna talk about performance. So we've talked about security, now performance. So one of the things you might want to do for performance is look at a caching, caching plugin. So just search for cache. We can do this from your dashboard on your site. There's a whole bunch of different ones available here. They all do a pretty good job. WP Fastest Cache is pretty good. I used to like WP Super Cache. It's a bit more complicated though. Um, there's also WP Rocket, which is probably the best one, but you need a pro version if you want a lot of the features. But as you can see, Lightspeed Cache, lots of installations, lots of five stars and uh, yes. A lot of them also talk about content delivery networks, CDN networks. That's in addition to your caching, and that's really delivering some of your content closer to where your users are. Uh, one of the most popular ways to do that is Cloudflare, and you can use Cloudflare for free. And it's particularly useful to stop brute force attacks. People are trying to hack, hack your site, but it's also useful 
which is its primary function, where you might have users all around the world and you want to deliver content close to where they are rather than from the server location. And that's what a content delivery network does. It improves your performance. Okay, so, so far so good. If you have any questions, just uh, please feel free to chuck them in that little uh, chat box and I'll try and answer them for you. Okay, so we've talked about what you need for WordPress, what it's good for, what you need to get started. Um, now I'm just gonna talk about some themes and plugins that are available. So what the theme does is it provides the structure of your website. Uh, you can customize the look and the feel in terms of the fonts and the colors and the way it, the layout, but it gives that, that layout some structure. Now themes come in a range of different versions. There's generic ones that uh, apply to any sort of business. There's industry specific ones. So some people will develop ones for say real estate businesses or artists or coffee shops, you know, something like that. And, uh, and then there's others like Divi, which is like an all-in-one. They have pre-built templates for those industry-specific ones, but they have a whole bunch. So you can scroll down to see, you know, you might be a fitness instructor or a, a yoga instructor. You can choose which one sort of is the best fit for you. So I'll just show you here on WordPress again, just some of the themes available. These are some of the free themes that are available. WordPress will install a free theme, but um, often case they're quite limited in terms of functionality, but are also very, very good. So just wanna show you the themes here. If I go over to themes. And here you can see, now I'm just gonna stop that there because right there, these are all the, all the free themes. In my opinion, you've got almost two of the best ones right there. Astra and Ocean WP are two fantastic free themes. They both work with Elementor, which is the page builder, and they come with a range of free templates that you can, even pre-built sites that you can download to get started. But as you can see, lots of different themes available. If you want to, in, you know, install that, you can. From WordPress, you'd need to download it and then upload it to your web, WordPress website. From your website, you can just install it automatically and activate it if you want to from the dashboard. Now, if you want something a bit more premium than one of those free themes, there are marketplaces you can go to to sort source a WordPress theme. The number one marketplace for WordPress themes and plugins is in Envato. And I'm just going to show you Envato now. Envato is an Australian company. They're based in Melbourne. And they're just a marketplace for WordPress themes, amongst other things. Um, their WordPress theme website is called Theme Forest. And you can go there and choose any range of different themes. So we'll just look at some of the WordPress bestsellers. So there's Avada, the seven, B theme. These are all number one sellers. You can see, you know, lots, 245,000 sales, 750,000 sales. Enfold, X, there's a whole bunch of different ones. Flatsum is a fantastic e-commerce theme. There's Divi, which isn't on here. You have to get Divi through uh, elegant themes, but they're all around this cost of around $60 or so US dollars. Um, and they sort of do, a lot of them come with pre-built or built-in plugins that you might want to use or they need to provide functionality for their theme. In terms of page builders, I recommend something like Elementor. Uh, Elementor is a fantastic page builder. You can get specific themes for page builder could build a theme from scratch, um, but I'll just show you a page builder in a bit more detail, actually. So this is WordPress, sorry, this is Elementor here. There's different page builders. There's Elementor, there's Beaver Builder. Gutenberg is the WordPress built-in one. 
There's Divi, which comes with the Divi website. So depending on your platform, um, Elementor works with a lot of different platforms. Um, it's really easy. It's free for the basic version. And uh, they come with a range of different features that you can use to build your website. So it really is a matter of just dragging and dropping what you need onto your website. So I'll just show you that. So as you can see, it just puts everything in a format that's editable in sections. So you would have individual sections on your site and you can edit each one of those just by hovering over, over, over it, right clicking or clicking on it and then selecting what you want to do. It's a range of different little uh, widgets, if you like, or little assets that you can drag across and insert onto your website, depending on what you want to do. So really easy to use. So how you might, I'll just show you how you might quickly do this, but so you literally just, you can just drag it, something across. I'm just going to go down a bit. You know, and it's that simple. So if I click on that blue pencil there, I can edit it. I can right click, I can just select it and do whatever I want, change the font, make it linked to somewhere, choose what type of heading it is, you know, and I can do that with any aspect of the site. So I can duplicate things like just right click, duplicate, and it just copies that below. So it's a really easy page builder to, to use to build a website. Change the icons, build my own icons if I wanted to. Okay, so that's page builders. Now, I'm just going to briefly talk about uh, e-commerce, uh, running an uh, e-commerce store on WordPress. So the number one plugin for doing that on WordPress is WooCommerce. WooCommerce originally was a separate organization. They were based in Cape Town in South Africa. They developed an e-commerce shopping cart for WordPress. And eventually a few years ago, WordPress bought WooCommerce. So it's part of the WooCommerce stable of products now. Um, it's great for all different product types. It really doesn't matter whether you are a retail organization or you're selling wholesale, or if it's a marketplace even, where you've got multiple storeholders. Um, it's really super flexible. And you can design really any type of store that you want for any type of product. To it's totally customizable. And like I said, it's, it is open source. So if, if you're thinking of something to do on WordPress or WooCommerce, guaranteed that someone's done it or doing it or thought about it uh, already. So you can see all the different extensions that are available. I'll go into this in a little bit in a second, but uh, different themes. Now, most of these themes are things that WooCommerce built themselves. So it might be subscriptions where you, you might have a subscription product or you might have composite products. And I'll show you those in a second. So it really does provide everything you need to get your store up and running. Different payment options. So whether it's Square or WooCommerce have their own WooCommerce, WooCommerce payments, Stripe, PayPal, all sorts of different integrations. Now, I'm just gonna show you some WooCommerce themes, by the way. This is from just from a list by WP Forms, the different themes that WP Forms reckons are best for WooCommerce. Astro is that one I mentioned earlier, the free theme. It just gives you lots and lots of different options. I won't go down into too much detail here, but all the ones on this list 
basically uh, are all free things. Ocean WP. So it's very easy to get a WordPress installation up and running, selling products. Now, if you're not selling, uh, if you don't want to use WooCommerce, there are other platforms that you can use on your WordPress website. So Easy Digital Downloads is another one. It's used for selling digital products. So it might be images, artwork, uh, audio, whatever you want to sell as a digital product, uh, documents. Um, there's also Big Commerce, which is another e-commerce platform. They have a plugin that allows you to, you need, an account with both platforms. And there's also Equid. Equid is a little app you can run uh, on different platforms. It could be Facebook, it could be other websites or your own website. So there are different options available for you. In terms of the e-commerce extensions, there's lots of different things available for you. I just wanna show you what's available on their website. So there's WooCommerce Payments. This is relatively new. It's based on Stripe. Um, just gives you a pretty good uh, in terms of the rates. And, uh, you know, it's quite comparable to, say, PayPal. But it just gives you that option to, of providing something other than just PayPal. There's a few other tools they like you to use. I don't recommend, like Jetpack, um, which is their own plugin. Uh, you can do, for example, product add-ons. So if you want to enable people to add things onto their product or bundle products or maybe build a product if it's a composite product. So there's lots of different ways you can use WooCommerce to suit your particular product. In this particular case, it shows you a skateboard where they can build different parts of that skateboard to build a completely customizable solution. Automate Woo is another feature. It does automated marketing. Uh, you know, thanks for your order, uh, your products on the way, all of these sorts of uh, transactional type emails. Okay. Let me know if you have any questions. Now, I'm just going to touch on a, way, a few ways you can do some marketing on e commerce, on WordPress uh, using different email marketing platforms that you might want to use. So why would you do that? Well, because email marketing is gonna provide you with the, the highest return on investment of any of your marketing channels. So higher than you know combining some of your other social platforms, for example. So it is definitely worth considering. Now, I just wanna show you some of the different email marketing platforms that are available. The good thing is that virtually every email marketing platform integrates with WordPress uh, and WooCommerce. So whether it's SendInBlue, MailPoet, MailChimp, GetResponse, ActiveCampaign, they all, HubSpot, MailJet, they all work with uh, WordPress. So I would recommend, you know, giving one of these some thought. It might be MailChimp. But uh, MailerLite is an equally good email marketing package. Send in Blue is pretty good too. So definitely worth considering one of these. There are lots of different email marketing plans out there. So consider what you might want to use to integrate into these. So I just want to give you some food for thought, I guess. So this is just a list I got off the web, but just comparing some of the best email marketing platforms out there and why, you know, why they're best. So for example, um, MailerLite, I mentioned it before, you might want to consider this if you're looking for a really good free email marketing platform uh, that compares well with say MailChimp, but maybe a little bit more sophisticated. Um, and right through to the other end, which is something like GetResponse, which is like the Rolls Royce of email marketing plans has, you know, pre-built marketing funnels and everything that you can use. So just to compare these, you know, from a cost perspective, uh, particularly if you're just starting off and you don't have a lot of users on your list, just gives you some idea of these are their free plans. So the subscriber limit before you have to pay, 
uh, how many monthly emails you can send and the daily emails you can send. If you know, so some have monthly, some have daily. Um, yeah, so definitely worth considering those. There's also Clavio at the bottom there. I like Clavio, it's fantastic uh, in terms of some of the automations it does. So I'll just show you some of those too. And what you probably need to do if you do uh, want to use email marketing on your WordPress site, normally you'd have an account with that email marketing platform. You would then download a plugin, for example. In this case, I'm downloading OmniSend for WooCommerce. And so I'll download that. It asks me to copy that API key. I would then copy that and install it on my uh, on my particular website and insert that API key. And then it would come up with something like, you know, let's start with your first campaign or let's start building your audience. So really easy to get started. Now, sorry. So once you've done that then, what you need to do is start building a list. I don't go into that here, but you need to start collecting email names. So have a subscribe to our whatever it might be, you know, join our club or might be a newsletter, might be some other reason for them to pass their email across to you. Maybe it will dis discount or free shipping or something. But once you've done that, you can really start to do some personalized marketing by segmenting that list and doing, sending, you know, certain types of information or content to certain people at different times, because not everyone wants the same information. And that's really what the newsletter does. It's sort of a shotgun approach, trying to get the same information to be uh, read by everyone when they're not necessarily all interested in that. So this allows you to segment your content to your particular audiences and send it to them when they're most interested in receiving it. So just to show you how you might do that, you know, very quickly, because I am running out of time here and I've got quite a bit to, to get through still, but basically you would just break your list down, your email list into smaller segments. And you can do that by just by creating a segment basically, and then defining, you know, who falls into that segment and why they fall into that. So defining that segment. So it could be based on what someone's done in the past, or maybe it could be based on an anniversary. So you might need to remind them to order new stock, for example, um, could be a range of different parameters. And you can do that in most sophisticated email marketing platforms by categorizing people in terms of their behavior or what they've purchased or other things. So this is how you might create a VIP list, for example and then send them specific information uh, you know, that's relevant to your VIP customers, for example. Once you've done that though, you can then start to use automations in your email marketing. So email automations are fantastic because they do a couple of things. They do your email marketing for you without you necessarily having to lift a finger. You need to set it up, of course, um, but it also does some of your customer service functionality too, like th saying thank you for when someone orders something from you or telling them when something's about to arrive or wishing them a happy birthday or lots of different things you can do using marketing automation. So that's something you should uh, maybe consider looking at to improve your engagement on your WordPress website. And just if you are using something like MailChimp, these are some examples of what uh, automations are available in just the standard MailChimp platform. So, uh, you know, sending someone a welcome message or, um, you know, sending them an, an email based on what they're doing on your website, for example. The other sort of functionality you want to really get into your, onto your website is really being able to integrate your social media. And by integrating it, I mean feeds, you know, cross posting. So you might have a feed, I mean, like an Instagram feed on your website, for example or cross posting. So when you post something on your blog, it automatically goes to your Facebook page, for example. Being able to share content or like content on your web page, uh, having a Facebook shop or a Google shopping, for example, having Google reviews or reviews on social. These are all things that are integrating your, they're sending social signals, um, you know, to your website and vice versa. 
So, uh, you know, there are a range of different tools you can use to, to do that. Once again, I would highly recommend just having a look what's available, available on website, on WordPress, uh, under the plugins menu, but there's lots of different functionality there. Some of them are official, like Facebook for WooCommerce. If you do have a WooCommerce store and you're looking to use uh, a Facebook shop to display your products, then Facebook for WooCommerce is a must. Product feeds, same thing. If you wanna, if you have a lot of products and you wanna feed and sync those products, to your social channels, then you need that sort of thing, that sort of functionality. So there's an example of product feeds, for example. So a product feed would basically send a, an XML file to Google and or Facebook so that you can deliver your, display your products in a Facebook shop or on Google shopping tab, for example, or other potential channels like Amazon, eBay, for example. If you want to do social media marketing, same thing. There's a range of different uh, plugins that you might want to use. So there's Social Snap, does a range of different things. I would recommend investigating Social Snap. There's Smash Balloon, which provides social media feeds, like I was talking about before, say an Instagram feed. It's a pretty good product, Smash Balloon. There's also Buffer if you want to automate or schedule your social media posts. And Buffer will also do your Google My Business, also uh, uh, WordPress blogging as well as one of the channels that it handles. So you can do cross posting to any of those. Now, I do wanna talk about SEO very, very quickly because I'm running out of time, but uh, there's lots of good SEO plugins available on WordPress. You don't necessarily need them, although it does help, um, particularly if you're not very technical. So you might want to have a quick look just to see what's available. I can tell you about some of them as we have a look at these. And then I will show you how you would then do this SEO on your own site. So Yoast is the most popular. All-in-one SEO is also very popular. Rank Math is the up and coming, uh, very good uh, tool for doing SEO. So uh, any of these uh, would do a great job. I'll show you how to use Rank Math, uh, sorry, Yoast in a second. Uh, but you would need to install this and it just simplifies your SEO and makes you focused on what you're trying to do. So some of the things you do need to do, and I'll just go quickly through these, is your site structure, making sure that your site structure is logical and quite simple, not too complicated. And you've worked on your keyword research. So you've ident identified keyword phrases that you want to optimize your content around which is the next step. Security and performance we've talked about. Links are really important. So link is, links within your site between products, for example, or from the homepage to product categories is also very important, but also backlinks. So these are external sites linking to you. I don't go into a lot of detail here, but a good step there would be, and especially from a local SEO, would be to look at Google My Business and get a, get a Google My Business uh, profile started because at least there they, they do have a link to your business and it's a good start in, in terms of getting backlinks pointing to your, or other websites pointing to your website. Now, how would you do SEO on a WordPress? Now, I'm gonna be a bit short on time here, but I'm just gonna start this. So this is a WordPress product. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a product or a page. Um, it really doesn't matter. The same principles apply. It's maybe a little bit more complicated on a product because you've got a few more things going on. This is what I've got to work with. So quite a bit of detail really, but it's still not very well optimized. So bullet point information, not very good headline, uh, images that aren't, don't have any description, although they are very good images. So what would I do here? So firstly, you wanna edit the product. So you click on edit product. and you should be left with something like this. So the first you should have done is you should have gone off and done some research on what sort of keywords you want to rank for. So, I mean, it doesn't take a lot of effort to think of a keyword phrase that's a little bit more compelling than hooded jacket. 
So, uh, you know, there's a few different areas you need to do your SEO in. I'll go through those in a second. But, you know, assume that you've done that work. You then need to basically start to optimize the site based around that keyword. So in this particular case, I'm not going to do too much work. I'm just going to change that hooded jacket to camouflaged hooded jacket for men. And what I'm going to do is use that keyword in a number of different places now. So the first place I'm going to do, first place I'm going to put it is in the URL. It's quite important to do that. What you're trying to do here is paint a picture to your to search engines about what this product page is about. So the title, the URL, and then your first instinct might be to say, okay, I'm going to put a heading in here. So you could put the heading in there and you can even make that a H1 heading, for example. And then you've got a, you know, some bulletproof, inf uh, bullet point information, some uh, other details there. So what I've gone away and done is come up with the description based on some of this information. And I'm just going to copy and paste that in here so we can just have a look at that. Okay, so there's a conversational English description now. It's not bullet points. I'm going to bold and the keyword in there uh, just to, because search engines aren't very smart. So I want to make sure they know what an important word is. And that's the important phrase there. Same, you'll notice that I haven't, I'm only using camouflage hooded jacket, not for men, but that's okay because that's going to be my main keyword. Oops, sorry, I'm just, uh, I just messed up there. So I'm just going to keep playing there. So that's the key word. I'm going to go down. Delete some of the thing, things I don't need on there anymore. I'm going to leave the sized information on there. Now, I've got that keyword copied or have I? I'm just going to copy it just in case. Down the bottom here, this is Yoast. This is the plugin. I've decided to copy the whole keyword after all. So I'm going to go down to Yoast and it's saying, what's your keyword phrase, your focus key phrase? So I'm going to put that in there. And instantly I get a little amber smiley face or not quite smiley face yet, telling me that I'm on my way to improving my SEO. Down the bottom there, you can see a little snippet, what it looks like. In a Google search result now, so camouflage hooded jacket for men. I've inserted this little part here. I'll show you how to do that in a sec and a little description. Okay, so let's go up a little bit. Here you can see how I have done that there. I've just added a little bit of automation into Yoast there to describe that automatically. Same with the description, which is your meta. So what we're talking about there is your meta title or meta description. So I've just changed that. Your meta title or meta description is what shows up in a search result. Now this is your SEO analysis. You can see red, amber, green. So basically you need to get all of the red ones to green and all the amber ones to green. So you can see it tells you pretty simply what you need to do. So it's saying I don't have a good description down there. So I'm going to just take that and put that in my description, my short description. Add a heading. Now you'll see this is an error that I'm making here, but I'll just show you. I'll just leave it at the moment. Okay, so that's the short description. Now it's saying it's too long. So I'm just gonna cut a bit of that off. If you go back up to Yoast, you'll see that's now become green. So basically it's just a matter of working through some of those things. And once you've done one or two, you'll understand what you need to do. It's almost the same for every single 
every single um, product or page, you'll need to go through the same process. Now, most importantly, what you need to do is also make sure that that keyword phrase is included in that alternative text description. So this is also telling the search engines because they can't see your pictures. So they need to know what the picture's about. So you just need to make sure that that's included in there. So it is included in all these pictures. You need to do it for every single one. So I'm just gonna go back down, check out my, uh, my SEO. Still only amber, so I look to improve that. So it's telling me a few things here. Meta description is too short, so I'm going to fix that. Your meta description is the description that shows up in search results. And I'm just going to fix that in a second. Before I do that, though, I'm just going to add some links here. So I'm going to add some links to some other product categories. That they might this is cross sell upsell basically but it's also ticking that tick in the box that you need in terms of getting links on each page links internal links we're talking about and and maybe even an external link to some external website but uh i'm just putting this in here should really be boots rather than shoes but it's actually uh mostly shoes that i have here so i'm just going to do that Okay, so, so I'm just copying that for the meta description. And I'm just going to replace everything on there with my meta description. Be with me while I sort this out. Basically, I want this to be green. Just showing you what I'm doing, trying to speed this up. Okay, so I've got that green, that's my meta description. I'm just changing my page, my SEO title. So that's also a little bit catchier. Still too long. Okay, so there you go. Now, so it's still still not green. There's a couple of things. It's saying I've got more than one H1 heading. So for every page, you really should just have one H1 heading. And that's because, as you know, before I put in an H1 heading. So I'm just going to delete that. So I'm showing you what's and all what you sometimes come across here. So I'm just going to delete that because the head H1 heading is already up there, of course, in the title. So I'm just going to delete that. And you can see now I've, I've got a green traffic light there. Yeehaw. So this one's almost optimized. There's still a few things there. It's still same H1 heading. I've got two, two H1 headings. So you can click and try and find out where they are and it will show you, but it's actually in the short description at the bottom of the page. So I'm just going to go down to the bottom of the page there. I'm also changing the URL. 
No, that's a fully optimized page. Still got some things that you could improve, but it's much better than it was, uh, you know, just a short while ago. So that's that's how you would optimize uh, a WooCommerce store. I know that, uh, or a WordPress website, a page, anything. I know it seemed quite complicated, but really it's just a matter of doing that in a systematic way every time you add a page or, or a product. So just quickly, I just want to show you some, because I know we're, I'm already five minutes late, just some quick Google uh, plugins that you might use or might want to use. There's Google Site Kit, which is great for connecting some of your Google apps. There's Google My Business apps as well. There's the feeds. There's a range of different ones, it review apps. So I would definitely recommend having a look at the different Google plugins available. Um, other than that, uh, just quickly, I'm just gonna talk about blogging. If you're not doing blogging, you should do blogging because it's a great way to get rankings, particularly if you want to rank for a particular phrase. And what I'm talking about is it could be a question or an implied question, or it could be a, a uh, you know, a solution in the form of a list, for example. They Lists and uh, in particular, or answering questions will rank very, very well. So in this particular case, I searched for best handbag. To cut a long story short, every result on this page is actually a blog post. There's no actual web pages on here. So it does work very, very well. And it's a great way to get uh, content to your site or traffic to your site, sorry. Just finally, forms. There's lots of forms plugins you can use. WP forms is very, very good. And then just some other ones you might wanna think about. There's live chat to, in terms of talking to customers, social share buttons, uh, analytics to see what uh, your Google Analytics re uh, reports are, uh, headers and footers if you want to insert scripts like Google Analytics or that sort of thing. It's very handy. That's it, guys. Thank you very much. Sorry I'm a little bit late. I hope you got some value out of that. I'm going to just leave this up here because you can, if you want a copy of this presentation or some resources and tools that I've collected over the time, you can go to this link and uh, you can download them from there. Just make sure you copy that link as it is. So with the capital N and C and the capital B, and uh, you should be able to get access to that. Also, you've got my email address there. If you have any questions about WordPress, I'd be happy to answer them uh, to 